Now we're going to have a look at Hermitian conjugation, which is also something very important for us. And for that purpose, we're going to start from uh, a bra and a cat, which are sandwiching an operator. So A is once more an operator. And if you look at it, we can see this in distinct ways. We can consider this to be the product of a dual vector uh, phi coming from the left and the transformed cat A psi. So you act with uh, phi from the left. Or you can consider this to be the product of the transformed dual vector phi A and the cat uh, psi which means then you act from the right. You have this bra, which is phi A, and you come with psi from the right. Either way, it works. So we're going to use and we're going this and define a Hermitian conjugate. A Hermitian conjugate of an operator A is defined in such a way that the this uh, relation must be satisfied. So basically the, comp the complex conjugate of the inner product of phi a dagger psi is equal to phi a psi a phi. So also we can say that the dual of the vector a phi is equal to psi a dagger bra. So if you apply, if you get the cat A psi, the corresponding bra is um, psi bra A dagger. And this is something, it's important to define Hermitian conjugation using inner products, because for instance, the people who modify inner products, they uh, are going to use um, this a lot when they deal with pseudo Hamitian Hamiltonians because some people could say just make a equal a dagger and don't bug me but this is something that has more wide-ranging implications. So Hamitian conjugation is going to convert an operator acting on cat to an equivalent operator acting on brass and what is also very important for us, because we said we're going to talk about basis changes, is uh, unitarity. So an operator is unitary if its Hermitian conjugate is its inverse. So if you have u u dagger equal to u dagger u equal to one, which is uh, the uh, identity operator, then you know that your operator is unitary. And they have very nice properties. For instance, uh, unitary operators, they preserve the norm. So norm of unitary oper operator applied to psi is going to be norm of psi. They preserve the inner product between two pairs of vectors. So you can see, for instance, that psi u dagger u phi is just going to be the uh, inner product of psi and phi which is clear because u dagger u has to be one, which is the identity operator. And you can also see that they have eigenvalues of the form E i phi. And you can use these two properties actually to change bases using uh, unitary operators. So the consequences of this is that you can use U given two orthonormal basis sets phi i and psi i for the same space, you can write phi i as, or psi i in this case, as U phi i. So you can um, change that basis using uh, unitary operators. And this is something that is quite nice. And we're going to have a look at basis change. We're going to assume 
to do our basis change that we would like to write. So our key assumption here is that we would like to write this arbitrary uh, state vector psi, which is at the moment given by this uh, coherent superposition in the basis alpha j, whereby alpha j are orthonormal, basis states in a different basis, which is going to be given by beta j. So it's pretty much like changing the coordinates of a vector or going from one coordinate system to the other, but in the Hilbert space. So we're going to use unitarity and we're going to use closure relation. So using closure relation, so using the closure relation, we're going to have that psi is going to be some over j, cj, alpha j, Let's put here CJ identity operator alpha J. So here, and now we're going to write this explicitly. So this is equal to sum over J CJ, uh, sum over K. We said we want beta, right? Some arbitrary basis beta, so beta k, beta k, alpha k, alpha uh, j. Okay, so the difference is we have inserted here the explicit uh, expression for this guy using uh, what we know from the closure relation. Now let's rearrange this and this is going to give you some of our j and k. Now we're going to have cj beta k and we have this inner product here beta k alpha j which comes here from this guy. Once more because this base is orthonormal, we can have that this is going to be the Kronecker delta kj or no one said bullshit anyway. So now uh, we need to calculate this inner product. We have this inner product here between beta, j, beta k and alpha j. And this is going to be a scalar. It's an inner product, right? So let's call it ukj. And this is a scalar. And in fact, I can say more. I can say that this is that UKJ is a matrix element of a unitary operator. 
that affects basis change. So this means, in other words, that alpha j is going to be u beta j. And this expression that you had here is going to be sum over j and k cj ukj beta k. So if you look, you see that what we have done is we have transformed this and this is like as a matrix. So that's why we started to talk about matrices because we were pretty much interested in this kind of behavior. And you can see when you're doing these transformations that uh, all these uh, cats and these bras and these operators, they can be written as matrices. And also we would like to prove now that U is unitary. So let's have a look and let's try to make a proof that U is unitary. Okay. So we're going to start with this UKJ, which is given by this inner product. And we want to calculate what would be u dagger kj or u dagger jk because it's like this element or the jk element, let me write it this way, I think it's nicer to understand. The jk element of u dagger would be the complex transpose of uh, UKJ. So it has to be this guy, right? And if it has to be this guy, we can write this like in a product of alpha J with beta K. Also remember that we have seen that this, with regard to this, if you write uh, them in, column forms or row forms that they're going to be the transpose of uh, the complex conjugate. So what do you have? Because we are interested, don't forget, we are interested in u dagger u, correct? So if you want to write u dagger u, and if you want to focus on u dagger u j m, this means uh, the element j m row j column m of the uh, u dagger u operator. You can write this like this. K u dagger j k u k m so we can put this in terms of brass and cats because we kind of know what they mean so what we said is we are interested in these elements and how to write these in terms of brass and cats so this guy uh udaga jk this is going to be this inner product of this alpha j uh, basis vector with beta k basis vector if you are confused look at this definition here right is a scalar because it's an inner product. And apart from being a scalar, 
it's is uh, something that uh, you can associate to a matrix. Now, how about this guy? This is going to be then beta k alpha m. You see where we're getting at. <clears throat> if we make this nice, we're going to have here k, some k, alpha j, beta k, beta k, alpha m, correct? Which means that we can also write this as alpha j, the sum is only over k, be careful. So we're gonna have then this guy. Which from what we have seen is equal to the identity operator because this is a closure relation, right? Very nice. So we can pull, we can get rid of this because it's the identity operator and you're going to have this in a product alpha J alpha M, which is going to be delta J M. So it's one if J is equal to M and the zero if J is different from M. And what did we achieve? We wanted to prove unitarity, right? So if you can conclude that you dagger that the, this element, mj of u dagger u, is equal to delta jm, you're going to have a unitary matrix, right? Because look, this is going to be one if m is equal to j, and this is going to be zero if m is different from j. So how does a unitary matrix look like? Let, let me put just a very simple example, like you have one, zero, 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 and then here you have zero, one, zero, 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 one, etc., etc. So you see what is happening. You actually verified here, because of this condition, that this is a unitary matrix. And we wanted this operator to be unitary, so we wanted to prove that u dagger u is equal to one, right? And that is pretty much what we achieved. This is unitary. Okay. So how about properties? Because we're talking about some inner product, we're talking about unitary operators, we talked about basis change, and if you paid attention, you could see that um, closure relations, they are unbelievably useful for basis changes. So let's have a look at properties. If you have an inner product to start with, so the inner product psi one, psi two, whereby psi one, this with the tilde, okay, is u psi one, so and the other one, psi two tilde, is u psi two. So what they're doing here, we're defining two cats, psi one tilde, psi two tilde, and they are so defined that they are related to psi one and psi two respectively by this unitary operator here, which is acting upon it. So you transforming it 
And we want to calculate this in a product here of psi one tilde with psi two tilde. So bra psi one tilde get psi two tilde. And uh, we want to show that this is equal to psi one u dagger, right? We just applied, okay, if you have uh, Phi, uh, if you have psi one tilde and you want to take the bra, this is going to be phi one uh, bra u dagger and you're going to have then that with phi two tilde. So this is the inner product of this guy and this guy. This bra, which I defined using all these properties that we have seen. <coughs> Sorry, related to emission conjugation. And this uh, cat, so if you compute it, you're going to have that psi one tilde, psi two tilde is going to be psi one, u dagger, u psi two. And this we have seen is equal to the unita uh, unitary operator. So this means then that psi one, psi two tilde, this inner product is going to be equal to the inner product of the untransformed uh, state vectors. So this should not change upon any kind of basis uh, change. So this remains invariant upon uh, this transformation. because it's uh, unitary. So you, you satisfy this property. So this is a consequence of its being unitary. Okay, on top of that, uh, we know and we can show, we're going to show that the product of two unitary operators is also unitary. Okay, how are we going to show that? We're considering then two unitary operators, okay? So let's consider U and V such that you're going to have that U dagger U is going to be equal to U, U dagger is going to be equal to the unit operator and on top of that unit operator so identity operator you have v dagger v is equal to v v dagger equal to the identity operator so from the definition we have seen this guy is unitary right because you tick this box here 
And this guy here is also unitary because you also satisfy that when you take V dagger V, you're going to get the identity operator. Okay, so we want to calculate now what happens if you have the product. So with the product of these two operators, you're going to have U V dagger and U V, right? We know, however, that U V dagger is V dagger, U dagger, and then you have here U V. So this with this is going to give you identity. So you have V dagger, V, and this is also going to give you the identity operator, which means that U V dagger, U V, is the identity operator, which is what we wanted to show. Correct? So, uh, if we want to make a good statement here and tell you something important, you should note that these unitary operators, okay, so I'm going to write this loud and clear. they constitute the generalization of orthogonal operators to complex spaces. So unitary operators are the generalization of orthogonal operators to complex spaces. And what do I mean? I mean the following. I mean that if you have an ordinary 3D space, operators that conserve the norm and the scalar product, which is what we have, okay? So if you want to conserve the norm and the scalar product, R, for instance, rotations, reflections, symmetry, meaning symmetry operations with regard to, to a point, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you do two rotations, this rotation is going, this composite rotation is going to uh, still satisfy those properties that is going to conserve the norm and is going to conserve scalar products, etc., etc. If you do translation as well. So all these things that we are discussing right now and what you can see, for instance, from these properties that you do an inner product it remains the same. So if you would do the norm, which would be phi one, psi one tilde, uh, Brabs, psi one tilde, cat, you would also see that it remains invariant. So uh, if you compose these, you're still going to have a unitary uh, operator. So all this is actually showing you that uh, they behave like translations or like rotations or like these type of things which are unitary, which you find in 3D space, which is not surprising, but it's very clever because it shows you that the uh, Hubert space behaves 
like a complex uh, generalized vector space, which is what we have been stating here all the time. And if you're talking about transforming things, how about when you want to go from this uh, space that you are considering to a subspace? How about projections? So we should.